All right, here it is, unfiltered. A little shop tour, a little walkie-talk, whatever it's going to be. This is the desk you guys normally see. Uh, as you can tell right now, it's in a state of, let's call it, disarray. That's the instructions for this bad boy. This is a super capacitor that I'm going to be using to start the LTD. Uh, I've actually been using it to jumpstart my lawn tractor because the battery's dead. haven't had time to go buy a new one. Let me take you around to show you where we're at. This is my, let's call it, garage, shop, whatever. It's always the last on the list of stuff to do. I'm not taking care of my kid, not taking care of my dad, who will be 88 in January. It's a lot of stuff to do, so this always ends up in last place. I have finally had enough. I'm going to clean this mess up. So I can actually do some work on this beast here. Because it's about time. We know the direction we're going in. We know the Whipple's not going back on it. Uh, can I safely get through here? <laughs> this is the problem, people. This is it. This is the issue. So here is the little mill. I was actually making something. I forgot what. Uh, that's why it still has chips all over it. Uh, but the big thing that I needed to do was on the lathe. So the lathe originally came with a little four inch chuck. I've had, it's a, you know, a three jaw scroll type chuck. This guy here is a six inch four jaw independent chuck. I bought it over a year ago. I just haven't had time to make the back plate. So uh, back plate obviously is right here. Turned out pretty good. The other thing I needed to do was I had this indicator stand uh, but nothing to mount it on, so I mounted it on uh, a boring bar holder, which I never use because it's a small lathe and I can't really fit a 16 millimeter boring bar, so, you know, that seemed to be like the perfect solution, and it does indeed work out rather nicely. I don't know if you can see this. It's a little out of true here. But that is the end of the piece of stock that I made this out of. It goes all the way through the boring bar holder. You can kind of see the back of it. Sort of badly lit. I apologize for that. But that's all going to change. So anyway, that was one of the holdups. But we need this to be able to turn the shaft with absolute precision. So that's why that was done. Let's see if we can go around the back of the LTD here. See if we can convince the gimbal to spin around. Here is the other part of the problem. You know you're in trouble when you've had a workbench in a box for six months in your garage and not had time to assemble it. Yes, this is highly embarrassing for me. I'm sure you're chuckling. This table was supposed to be a temporary table just to put collections of bolts and various other junk, but it kind of grew into, well, largely a pile of crap. There's my porting station where I ported the cylinder heads in the intake manifold, largely now serving as a storage for junk. The Whipple, by the way, is underneath this pile of plastic. Let me see if I can dig it out. Ah, there she blows. It's nice, safe, secure. There it is, but that's not going to be going back on anytime soon because of what we're doing here. I actually found the motor I want to use for the electric Vortec that we're going to be making. All right, let's get right to this part of the video. I shot the other part of the video like over a week ago. This is taking me forever, I'm ashamed to say. But anyway, let's take a quick look at the uh, the shaft for the impeller here. This thing is, uh, these are still the bearing races. I still haven't pulled them off, and I don't want to pull them off until I'm sure I have to pull them off because, uh, you know, I don't want to mar this up. There's not a whole lot of danger of that because... This thing is uh, one tough mother. This is the best file I have. It's a coarse side, it's a Nicholson. It really isn't doing much. It's skating like Brian Boitano in a gay bar. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, and not intended to offend anyone. Please, for the love of God, people, chill out. Uh, anyway, so uh, I did find these bearings. They run about 16 bucks. Uh, they do require an oil bath, and uh, they're made by they're they're Nachi bearings. Nachi. What kind of bearings? Nachi. Your bear. Never mind. Anyway, so uh, these guys, uh, like I say, run about 16 bucks, and uh, they're designed to run in an oil bath, and they are good for something like 52,000 RPM. So most likely, what we're going to end up doing is making a small 
almost like a reservoir for the oil. Um, I think that will probably work and it's probably the most uh, pragmatic thing to do. I did find some other bearings that would work. They cost about 150 bucks a piece. I don't know if I'm willing to do that for this. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot easier just to go ahead and make a little reservoir type of thing where you can swap out the oil, kind of like every positive displacement blower I've ever had. So, you know, I think we're just going to go that route. Anyway, so that's that for, uh, well, actually, wait, one more thing I wanted to talk about. So the way we're going to deal with the hardened uh, um, surface of this shaft, because we do have to turn this down, we will have to drill a hole in the back. Uh, I'm going to have to grind this down, and hopefully, you know, the, the hardness is only, uh, like beauty, skin deep. Um, but we will find out for sure uh, once we take a grinder to this thing. It's almost a shame to do it, but you know what? It has to be done. Now let's take a look at the motor that I ordered. So the motor is made by a company called TP Power. Sorry, that makes me laugh. Beavis and Butthead. You, you have a reference there if you're old enough. Anyway, it's a TP5860, uh, which is not the largest motor this company makes. It's actually one step down from that. This motor measures 58 millimeters by 106 millimeters. Uh, the biggest one is just under 58 millimeters in diameter and like a centimeter longer. But the reason why I went with this one over the other one is that this one has a max RPM of 50,000, whereas the other one caps out at 40,000. So 50,000, if you recall, will allow us to walk all over the compressor map, see how far up we can get, see how much power it takes to turn the impeller at that RPM. The one that I ordered is a 12S capable, which means it runs at about 48 volts with a max of just over 50. And uh, it's, got, it's rated at 970 kV, so that's 970 RPM per volt. Uh, the really cool thing is it has a continuous power rating of 7200 watts, which is just under 10 horsepower, and a max power rating, so a 10 second burst of 15,000 watts, or 15 kilowatts, or just over 20 horsepower, which is insane. The motor that's a little bit bigger than this one has a continuous power rating of just over, I, I think it's like somewhere around 9,000 watts, uh, but it has the same peak power rating. So, you know, we're giving up a little bit of continuous duty power, which actually, frankly, doesn't matter for what we're doing because it's not going to run continuously. And also, in the worst case scenario, we can fab up a water jacket around the thing. It has the same peak power rating, so hopefully that's going to help us. So that will allow us to get some really good data, in fact, as to how much power this thing actually takes to turn. In this photo, you can see how big it is relative to somebody else's hand. That is not my hand. That could be Andre the Giant's hand. That could be a midget's hand. I have no idea. But, you know, I mean, realistically, that looks like a pretty small dude holding that thing. But it's still going to be a pretty big, beefy motor. You have an idea of the capability of the motor given the size of the cables coming off of it. We'll see how well it works. It's supposed to be here uh, sometime in January, like mid-January, I think they're saying. Uh, they apparently custom make these for each order. It costs about 288 bucks shipped. So let's get back to the garage and then uh, we'll say bye bye for now. There's my little Milwaukee Porta Band stand that I made a while ago. And this thing is basically worthless without a little palm ring vise like this. So you can cut bolts, whatever you need to do. Uh, my uh, blasting cabinet, which will come into play soon here. It's, it's like a picture, a model of Japanese efficiency. It's got a little stand that I welded up uh, that straddles the compressor. You'll notice a fair share of like actually good tools and a bunch of Harbor Freight stuff. The compressor qualifies as a good tool. It's a Campbell Hausfeld. That's an actual port of band. But then over there we have Harbor Freight crap, which, you know, does the job, but not that well. This little saw over here, this is a uh, metal cutting Makita. That thing is bad ass. The major hold up here is really just the headers that I've been working on for, well, going on two years, but they're pretty much fixed up now. The only thing really left to do is to clearance the motor mount on this side and uh, clearance the transmission cross member and then clean them up and Cerakote them and bolt them on and they're done. I'll probably be getting rid of those valve covers too. I needed them for the Whipple for clearance, but uh, for this thing I won't. You know, this tensioning assembly, that's going to go. We'll just pull all this off, get it ready. I may even swap out the blower pulley, which, let me see if I grab a flashlight. You know, down there you can see it's got a big 8-inch crank and uh, basically an alternator underdrive pulley. But I may put the, the factory pulley back on. I don't know. 
but we'll see. We'll pretty this all up. We'll make it all great. Oh, another thing that's kind of cool about this place. So the house is actually really nice. It's an older house, obviously, you can tell by the garage, but I sort of love the vintage feel of this place. One of the things that came with the house when we bought it is that. I just left it there. That's where it was when I bought the house 15 years ago, and that's where it is today, and it kind of sums up everything that happens in the garage anyway. Look, we have extra spark plugs we can test. But there you go, fellas. I'm comfortable saying fellas because 99.5% of my viewers are fellas. But to the one lady out there, hello and welcome. We encourage you to participate and talk to us. Uh, we love the ladies. They're nice. Oh, check this out, by the way. So this is how I pull the engine out of the car. That chain hoist is attached to a piece of landscaping timber up in the attic. And there's obviously no room in here for uh, an actual engine hoist. And it's positioned right over the engine so you can actually pull it, push the car and put the car in neutral, roll it back and drop it down, do whatever you need to do. Hey, you do what you got to do, right? That's the way these things work. All right, off to cleaning this mess up. I'll show you an after. Hopefully it's significantly better than this godforsaken nightmare. So that's it. My shame, your laughter. Enjoy it. Yes, it's a shit bomb right now. There's a welder. There's a little TIG. For shame.